We are with one of my favorite composers, Titanic 9, The Phantom of the Opera, the one that you really don't know that's actually even better than Andrew Lloyd Webber's. <laughs> We're talking Maury Yeston. Grand Hotel, Webb. Oh, I forgot Grand, Grand Hotel. Hotel. I love Grand Hotel. Do you know that I watch the bar song oh. all the time? We'll take a glass together. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, it's one of my favorite dance numbers in the world. It, and it, it was a great dance on the show, too. Of all the shows that you've written, which is your favorite? It's, you know, it's I know good, they're your children. No, no, no. Well, no, I don't, I don't see it in terms of children. It's, they're old fingers on your hand. Which one would you cut off? You know, so None. It's like, that's right. So if they're like f fingers of your body, each one has its own function, right? One is the thumb, one is the pinky, right? but you, would, you wouldn't want to lose any of them. And that's the way I feel about the shows, you know? And so that's the way that it's equal. You know? Do you have a favorite song that you've written? Same thing. You know? Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, you, how could I pick? You know, I, I, as a matter of fact, I looked at my computer the other day, and I swear to God, it told me just on the list that I apparently have written well over 750 songs. Really? Well, I'm old now, you know. And, and, <laughs> You're not you know, old. They don't, they don't melt away. They just sit there. Uh, I've written a lot. And, and um, I, I surprised myself, but then I looked, look at all the shows I've written, and there are 20 songs or whatever for each show. Right. I, and, then and they're epic. Other projects. And then there are things that aren't shows. There's the December songs, which is a song cycle. I was going to talk about know. that. Yeah, and, and so uh, the, the truth is, is that if you have a life as a composer and a life in the theater, um, you have songs that you write because they're personal songs, songs that you write because you're inspired to write them. I'm also a classical composer. I wrote the American Cantata uh, and things like that. So, and then you have musical theater pieces. Uh, you have pieces that you've written for the show, then pieces you wrote for the show weren't in the show, but you still have them. And sometimes you write a piece for one show, you cut it or you don't put it in in the first place, and it ends up being a big song those are in the some next I, show. Those are some of my favorite songs, the trunk yeah. songs. Yeah, and a lot of friends of mine, a lot of people who have known me for a long time, they love to play the game of, what was that song in before it was in this show? Oh, I like know? that. And I like, like that they're, game. They're detectives. I like that game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you like to write about that you haven't written about? Well, you know, I think the best answer to that question is one of my... What am I working on? Or what yes, do what I are you want, working on? Want to work on. Um, I, I'm right now just finished a project, um, and about, and I've done all the research, and I, I don't mind. T I, I don't mind saying it. It's not a secret. I think th the thing that I would like to spend the next year or two or three, if that's all it could take, is to write finally the, a show that I've been dying to write literally for most of my life which is a show about the story of the building of the Brooklyn Bridge. Ooh. Because it was built by a family, a father and his son, and then, and then his son become, becomes uh, confined to a wheelchair, and his, uh, this, we're talking about Washington Roebling, and then his wife Emily helps him, and, and she takes messages back and forth to the engineers for the next three years until they build the bridge. I can see the poster for that. Oh, it's beautiful. A lot of people lost their lives building that bridge, oh, didn't they? they certainly did. But it's also the, the most beautiful bridge. We still oh. love it. Just walking across it, it's an exquisite piece of architecture. And of course, it's the first, it, it, it's what joined this city together. The idea, mm. I mean, the idea that, oh my goodness gracious, you know, John Roebling is going to build a bridge from New York to Brooklyn. They were two t separate cities. And instead of having to wait days for the ice to melt so that the ferry boat that's stuck in the water can come take you, you can just scamper across it. Wow. It's a miracle, and it's such a, a miracle of architecture, and it's such a piece of New York. And I, I just think that it represents, just as a bridge, bringing together all of the diversity of that's been in New York City, so it's a dream of mine. And I'm quite willing to, to, to spend whatever time I have left uh, to write that. <laughs> now you also have Titanic mm -hmm. coming to yes, Encores. It's coming to Encores. I'm looking so forward I'm to that. I'm so excited about that too. I am, yeah. Because it was in London, I couldn't get to London. But I did have a friend on it. They did, oh, did you really? Yeah, Craig. They, oh, of course. They did a beautiful job. You know, they, they toured all of the UK twice. And I think they're going to do another of it. And then what they do is they, they go to, they go to uh, China afterwards and then bring, bring the show there. Now that I'm hearing about the Kleban Foundation, we should talk about that. Yes, and here we are honoring my dear friend Ed Kleban. And you are.
the reason that this award really still exists, actually, if you ask me. Well, you know, Eddie was a dear friend of mine. Lehman Engel had created this BMI Music Theater Workshop. He's, you know, he was the dean of Broadway conductors and, and music directors. And Lehman just felt that he wanted to do something. He started it, you know, back in the 1960s and 70s. He started it so that he could train young composers and lyricists in a workshop. And BMI furnished the room and the money to do it so that there would be a future of musical theater. And that very first class, uh, there were some wonderful people who were there, and sitting next to me was my friend Alan Menken, and sitting next to me on once, and on the other side was Edward Kleban. He was older. He had gone to Columbia. Uh, I was still, um, I think I, I'm trying to remember if I was just finishing my PhD. I think I was finishing my PhD dissertation, and then I ultimately uh, uh, finished the PhD and I was appointed to the Yale faculty and eventually became the head of the department. Um, and so there I was working as a music theorist and Alan had just gotten out of M NYU and we, would, we were learning how to write shows. You know, we would get an assignment, uh, we would a situation and of course Eddie was ahead of us because he was older and he had already accomplished a great deal in his writing. And um, we were, we were there for two years, three years, even four years. And then one day, it looked like Ed w was, was going to get an opportunity. And we were so thrilled for him, you know? And, and, uh, and here was this show, a chorus line. And, and he, would, he, he would come into the class and he would play first versions of the song. We oh, were the wow. Because he loved the workshop because it's his opportunity to, to hear how is the song going to work with an audience. We were an audience, right. and that's the greatness of that workshop. Well, after you know, after a while, you know, I finally did nine. We did a reading of nine up at the O'Neill Foundation. I and love they, the O'Neill. They, they hired this young director, his name was Howard Ashman, to direct it. And at the end of it, he did a great job. At the end of it, he said, "You know, I uh, I, I write lyrics, and I'm looking for a composer." And I said, "Well, you have to be my friend, Alan Menken." And that's how that's how that started. Little shop. That, that's how they started. Oh my I God, to Alan. And we so, have to conclude yeah. this interview, yes. but I want to say, starting this Friday, but it'll actually be Wednesdays, live from the Edison Hotel, Times Square Chronicles presents. Look for Maury because Maury has already said that we're, he will be my we're guest. We're doing the show. Times Square Times Time Square Chronicles live from the Edison Hotel. Same microphone. <laughs> Actually, it will be. <laughs> <laughs>